As we've been reporting, the Federal Reserve will not be raising interest rates for the first time since March of 2022. Speaking to reporters Wednesday, Fed Chair Jerome Powell said holding rates steady allows the Fed to see how previous rate hikes continue to affect inflation. He cautioned, however, that the Federal Reserve may raise rates another 0.5 percentage points by the end of the year. Here to discuss today's decision and the tea leaves perhaps around it is uh, J.D. Durkin. He's an on-air host for The Street, a digital financial news platform. So, J.D., why do you, what's, what do you take out of what Powell said? And if this is a pause to see how things are going, it takes a little while for these rate changes to get through the digestive tract of the economy. But um, what are they looking for in this pause period? I got to say, I talk with a lot of analysts every day, John. Not many use the phrase digestive tract to describe what's going on, but that's true. We've got leading indicators in the economy, things like manufacturing and housing. Then we've got these really stubborn lagging indicators, things like pricing and unemployment in the labor market. And I think after 10 consecutive short-term interest rate hikes, this is really Chairman Jay Powell and his colleagues saying, OK, maybe at least for right now, enough is enough. You can call it a hike. You can call it an intermission if you'd like. Don't call it a skip for whatever it's worth. I don't know if you caught this. He caught himself. He used the word skip and then said, OK, I actually shouldn't probably call it a skip. That's something a lot of economists and analysts will be digging into very closely. As you know, we follow every word the man says very closely. And what, why skip and how is skip different from hop and jump? I mean, why is there some, what does skip connote? And I, this, people will think this is absurd, but, but, but weighing the individual uh, things he says, and this is kind of the lead to the next question. Mm -hmm. So the Fed makes a decision about rates and then they send signals about what's happening in the future. And those signals are as powerful sometimes as what they do with actual rates. So is there something embedded in the idea of skip that um, we should be paying attention to? Maybe not too much. I mean, admittedly, it gives us who work on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange a lot to talk about when we go on air tomorrow. Right. Uh, but admittedly, he caught himself and he wanted to be very careful with what he says because he is, he's is he got the really unenviable task here, John, as you know, of bringing inflation back down to 2%. People on Wall Street like to joke. They say, hey, I know the president's important, but it's really the chairman of the Federal Reserve who is incredibly important, especially at a moment like this. He knows every word he comes out and says, either in the written statements, the prepared remarks he makes, and then really in that question and answer portion are really important. And everyone's going to listen closely for some indication of what happens next. And we got that today. I'm, gonna let, I'm just going to let go of the skip business, uh, although it's very hard for me. Um, but it's funny, you mentioned that people say that the president's not as important as the uh, chairman of the Federal Reserve. The White House for a while was saying that, too, when they were getting blamed for the economy. Tell me about the, what the sense is on Wall Street, um, both about this decision today and just in general about things. Well, I'll start with the second part first. I mean, in general, the conversation three to four months ago was the R word. It was recessions. You heard this in analyst note after analyst note. You heard this from CEO after CEO. And now you talk with analysts, John, and they're inclined to say recession. What recession? We're not really necessarily seeing that. There's a lot more optimism suddenly that the central bank may be able to, and I say this with cautious optimism, be able to stick this really difficult, soft landing. That has been the, the sort of goal of all this. Can we drive inflation back down to its ultimate goal of 2% without necessarily forcing the American economy into a recession. We still see spending strong across uh, some parts of the uh, economy, but this is an incredibly resilient American economy right now. And Chairman Powell said as much earlier today. What what are we to make of it, it, he? Uh, the chairman also said that supply chain issues weren't as bad as they thought, but then maybe, but that they still existed. What's the um, what's your your take from your reporting about? supply chain and basically the ability of companies to get what they need to make what they need. I think there's a reason we haven't talked as much about the supply chain challenge as we did this time last year or in 2021. One of the questions to Chairman Powell today was, well, how do you sort of uh, give me your sense on the evolution of inflation? And he said, you're kind of dealing with two different chapters. Back in 2021, it was goods inflation. It's important to separate goods from services. So goods inflation meant a lot of people were at home. They had that extra COVID cash. They were spending money on goods they wanted around the house. And suddenly today, maybe some that COVID cash has been worn down. They're still spending money, but it's now in the services part of the economy. And services are things like haircuts, as well as manicures. John, I do need a manicure. Don't look too closely and don't tell my mom. Uh, but that, that they're stubborn parts of inflation in the services economy, I think, helps explain today's inflation pattern. And that's really what the Fed is really closely focused on to get inflation back down to 2%. You know, one of the underlying themes of the conversations we've had about the economy over the whole period where the Fed has been trying to catch up to inflation, because Powell's admitted that they were a little slow, um, is how hard it is to know what's going on in this post-pandemic economy. You talked about the resilience, but as you also mentioned, for so long, people were saying, oh, my gosh, the U.S. economy has got all these challenges. When you talk to analysts, how, um, 
humble are they? I mean, um, analysts are always giving, you know, post hoc rationalizations for things that happen like they saw it coming. But is there a, a humility or at least a kind of like, well, I don't know what's going to happen. This economy surprised us a thousand times. Uh, the number one phrase I always hear from economists or, or analysts is that you always hear this thing where they say, well, on the one hand, it could be this. Yeah. On the other hand, it could be that. And that's everyone's favorite phrase when you talk about the economy, because it is so dense and it's difficult to project. I'm reminded of what Pre President Harry Truman once famously remarked. I know you're a fan of history. You'll know this. He said, can anyone just bring me a one handed economist? I would really like a straight down the middle answer, but it's very difficult. But uh, to be fair, I don't oftentimes hear the words economic analyst and humility used in the same sentence for whatever it's worth. Everyone is trying to see, as you said at the top of our interview, uh, where, where the puck is going from here or how to read the tea leaves, so right. to speak. J.D. Durkin, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. Appreciate it.